the eagle and the beetle. A beetle loved a certain hare and wandered with him everywhere. They went to fairs and feasts together, took walks in any kind of weather, talked of the future and the past on sunny days or overcast. But since their friendship was so pleasant, lived for the most part in the present. One day, alas, an eagle flew above them, and before they knew what cloud had shadowed them, the hare hung from her talons in mid-air. Please spare my friend, the beetle cried. But the great eagle sneered with pride. You puny, servile, cloddish bug! Go off and hide your ugly mug! How do you dare assume the right to meddle with my appetite? This has my snack. Have you not heard? I am the great god Zeus's bird. Nothing can harm me. Least of all, a slow, pathetic, droning ball. Here. Keep your friend's head. And she tore the hare's head off and swiftly bore his bleeding torso to her nest, ripped off his tail and ate the rest. The beetle stared at her friend's head and wished that she herself was dead. She mixed her tears with his dark blood and cloaked his face with clods of mud. She swore that till her dying breath, she would avenge his cruel death, that she would make the eagle pay for what she had performed today. The day she slowly tracked the trail, from drop of blood to tuft of tail, till high up on a mountain crest, she found the huge unguarded nest, and at the hour that yesterday. The bird had plunged towards her prey. The beetle, with her six short legs, rolled out the mighty eagle's eggs. She left at once, but she could hear the eagle's screams of pain and fear. When later she returned and found the broken eggshells on the ground. Next day, the eagle moved her nest. Ten miles or more towards the west, but still the beetle's scrutiny followed her flight from rock to tree. When finally the eagle laid another clutch, the beetle made straight for the nest in which they lay. And when the bird was hunting prey, with much fatigue but little sound, rolled the great eggs onto the ground. When this had gone on for a year, the eagle, crazed with rage and fear, would turn back, screeching in mid-air. Whenever she would sight a hare, the far drone of the beetle's flight shattered her calm by day or night. For weeks on end, she scarcely slept. She laid her eggs in grief and wept. When what she'd feared had come to pass. And her smashed brood lay on the grass. At last, she cried, "What is the use of bearing your protection, Zeus, when that small evil clot of mud has massacred my flesh and blood? King of the gods, where may I rest? Where may I safely build my nest? Where lay my eggs without mishap?" Here said the god, "Here in my lap." And so the eggs lay more secure than they had ever lain before. What in the universe could be more safe than Zeus's custody? So thought the eagle. Till one day the beetle saw them where they lay, and aiming with precision, flung a microscopic ball of dung into the lap of mighty Zeus. Who, rising, spewed divine abuse, and shaking dirt from off his legs, unthinkingly tipped out the eggs. Past hope, the eagle pined away and died of grief, 
and to this day they say that eagles will not nest in months when beetles fly their best but others not so superstitious merely assert that fate's capricious and that the strong who crush the weak may not be shown the other cheek